When you look at the night sky, it seems like there's not much happening up there and that the stars always twinkle at the same spot. For thousands of years, researchers followed the idea that the lights in the sky were unchanging. Sailors guided their ships using fixed stellar patterns. There are also the exact outlines of constellations we observe today, and astronomers identified them a long time ago. It seems impossible that, one day, we wake up and simply can't see some stars anymore. Or does it? A team of researchers at Vanishing and Appearing Sources During a Century of Observations, or VASCO, studied the sky to check how things with the stars are going. The astronomers got the data from Gaia, the European Space Agency, and compared the information from 70 years ago to that from today to see how the sky has changed. To test it right, they had to use both modern and old telescopes. And something really interesting happened up there. Over 700 stars from the old maps were missing. If one star disappears, multiple theories could work. But it's harder when hundreds of them vanished at the same time. Could it be that the data was wrong? Or these stars were too faint to detect? Nope, they quickly eliminated this option because these stars had clearly been part of their earlier observations. So, the first thing that comes to mind when talking about how stars disappear is that they reached the point where they ended their lives. You can have the most massive stars of all, and we're talking about those that are way heavier than our sun, and they go through sudden changes as they get to the end, which we also call a supernova. It's a powerful explosion that later shines for many, many months. And it's still visible, even across hundreds of millions of light years. But that's the point. You see the traces, unlike here. Could this be a failed supernova? That means maybe one of them collapsed but turned into a black hole and consumed the remains from the inside out without causing a powerful explosion. But no one's been mentioning any signs of a black hole being active anywhere near those stars. And what if the stars had become less visible because of dust or gas around them? This is something that can easily happen, as interstellar dust and gas do block our view of objects that are far away. But there were no traces of unusually high concentrations of dust or gas. Nothing destroyed them either. Researchers would have seen traces if something like that had happened. Plus, these missing stars were not all in the same area, which means there probably wasn't just one fatal thing that made them all disappear. Also, the stars were not at the same stage of their life, so it's not an option they were all accidentally close to their end. They weren't particularly old or young, and they were on different levels in size and brightness. At some moments, it even seemed these stars haven't vanished because of some natural events. Maybe it was something related to other civilizations that might be somewhere out there in space. Maybe that's one of the ways to look for them. We could stumble upon some secret civilizations from other planets if we carefully observed the behaviors of stars, especially those we can't explain. No one knows what exactly happened with the missing stars. And unfortunately, right now, all we have are these theories. But you have to admit, they're cool though. Maybe it's just some kind of optical afterglow caused by gamma ray bursts, or maybe even fast radio bursts. Fast radio bursts are powerful pulses of radio waves. They can release more energy in a couple of thousandths of a second than our giant sun does in almost a hundred years. We don't really understand how these energy eruptions work yet, so we don't know what they can do. But still, hundreds of stars at approximately the same time. There are between 100 to 400 billion stars in our galaxy, so we'll probably see some of them disappear too. Hopefully, we'll understand better why such things can happen. Of course, scientists are not sure about this number because we can't see all of the Milky Way stars from our home planet. Some are too faint, some are too far, or even hidden by dust or gas. But they assume these numbers based on the size, shape, and likely mass of the Milky Way. And out of billions of stars, there are a little over 9,000 of them we can see with the naked eye. If you want to see more, 
you need a good telescope that will reveal those fainter ones your eyes are unable to discern. Many of the stars we see in the night sky are probably not alive anymore. Stars are giant balls of gas that produce light and heat through nuclear fusion in their cores. However, stars also have a limited lifespan, and eventually, they run out of fuel and stop shining. When a star passes, it can either become a white dwarf, neutron star, or black hole, depending on its size. Scientists have discovered that some of the stars we see in the night sky are too old to still be shining. This means that they may have faded, but we are still seeing their light because it takes so long to reach us. Actually, we may be looking at the past when we look up at the stars. Check out all of the stars you can see with your bare eyes. They lie within about 4,000 light years of us. That means what we're seeing are stars that appeared 4,000 years ago. Most of the stars we know of exist within galaxies, which are massive collections of stars, gas, and dust held together by gravity. Still, there are large areas of empty space between galaxies too. And the question is, could they have any stars? It seems that these areas of space are not completely empty. There is still some gas and dust, as well as dark matter, which is a type of matter that we cannot see but we know exists because of its gravitational effects on other objects. Scientists have even discovered a few isolated stars in these areas of space. These stars didn't form there. They ended up there by accident, which means they have probably been ejected from their galaxies by gravitational forces or collisions with other objects. And there could be more of these stars than we realize, but they are simply too dim to be seen from Earth. Stars don't actually twinkle. It's more that we just see it like that from the Earth. It seems like they twinkle because of the turbulent atmosphere of our planet. The light from a star must pass through many layers of the atmosphere. Not every layer is equally dense, so this causes the light to slightly deflect and change in color and intensity. There's one star named Sirius that sometimes twinkles, sparkles, and flashes so much that some people even tend to report it as something extraterrestrial. This is because Sirius is very bright and is often low on the horizon, which means it experiences more of these special effects of the Earth's atmosphere. When in space, astronomers and astronauts who observe stars from there don't see them twinkling. Hey, want to hear something cool? Me, you, your friends, the rest of humanity, we're all made of stardust. The elements that make up human bodies and all life on Earth were formed inside stars. The building blocks of life, such as carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, were created inside stars and were eventually released into space when the stars were gone. These elements then became part of new stars, planets, and eventually life on Earth. The iron in our blood was created in the cores of supernovas, which are massive explosions that occur when stars fade. Some say that even the calcium in our teeth and bones is likely to come from exploding stars. The oxygen in our lungs was created in the cores of massive stars before being released into space through supernovas. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.